If you think you are safe from Islamophobia because you are not Muslim, remember one thing, Muslims today are the barometer of democracy and the rule of law in France. Take a look at what's happening today to, uh, in terms of violations and you will know exactly what's going to happen to you tomorrow. And we saw it with the state of emergency. They began targeting Muslims, then they went on to target union leaders, environmentalists, anarchists, and, and many leftists. Why? Because leftists remained quiet while Muslims were being targeted. Emmanuel Macron, when he says he wants to protect the interests of the nation, he is the first one to jeopardize the national interest. How can you claim to fight terrorism against an enemy by dividing your own country? I will quote to you the Minister of Interior, Gérald Darmanin, who had called for the raids of 51 organizations and individuals. After the raids, he goes on radio or, or the media and says, we had nothing on those people, legally speaking. We are just sending a message. So here we are in the so-called country of human rights, the Minister of Interior raiding people's homes, terrorizing children, families, ransacking uh, homes in the name of sending a message. What kind of message are you sending? That Muslims don't belong here? Now, they hide by saying, we are only tackling radical Islam. Yes, so can you, can you please define? Where do you put the limits between faith and ideology? They keep it, you know, as unclear as possible so they could target any person. My definition from what I've been seeing is that radical Islam is any vocal Muslim, any Muslim they disagree with. The same Minister of Interior, Gérald Darmanin, who is himself being investigated for sexual harassment and rape. This is no joke. Comes on television and says, I find it shocking that there are halal shelves in supermarkets. You're gonna fight terrorism by prohibiting halal food? Why is my tax money subsidizing their incompetence? France right now is reaching a crossroads. The repressive model of counter-terrorism counter is a complete failure. The problem is that they applied radicalization against Muslims alone but not against the far right, which felt empowered. And despite the far right sending activists to the Ukraine to fight alongside Russia and get skills in military skills to manufacture weapons, IEDs, and you know, get trained to kill and come back unquestioned. On top of it, they set up camps throughout the country. It sent a message that white supremacy is okay and radicalization coming from white people is okay. And today, when we see the silence on what's happened in Avignon, uh, the organization Génération Identitaire, which is now being targeted, I was sent a screenshot of the Telegram channel of uh, Damien Rieu, the head of, the, of Génération Identitaire. And in the group, a guy says, I'm going to attack a mosque and there won't be two, three dead people. And a person intervenes and says, do not post that here. He doesn't even say don't do it. Just don't post it. The government remained quiet and did not call for the shutting down of Génération Identitaire. Despite Génération Identitaire having links with the terrorists who killed 60 people in Christchurch, New Zealand. The double standards are clear because Génération Identitaire is working in, in, in the footsteps of other far right organizations that do the dirty work of the state. We saw Génération Identitaire chasing around the immigrants crossing the Alps region, the Alps mountains, and the Minister of, of Interior saying nothing about it. Now, when you have an organization that takes the law into their own hands and become outsourcers of state repression, do we live in a stateless country? And the state remains quiet about it, and the Minister of Interior takes picture with those guys and says how you know how good they are. So of course there will be double standards in covering the barbaric Nice attack in a church. And there will be some kind of you know, guilty silence from the elites. What Emmanuel Macron is sending as a message is that for Muslims there is one place you stand by, watch and keep quiet. There is no opposition coming from you, and if you ever oppose the publishing of the cartoons, we'll be labeled a radical. Now, what's interesting about France again here is that freedom of expression means publishing cartoons. It does not mean speaking truth to power. It does not mean protecting journalists who are being prosecuted under Emmanuel Macron. And our freedom of speech, of course, is non-existent if it challenges power. Who sets the limits of freedom of expression? And I keep telling French people, and of course I'm blacklisted on French media, 
so much for freedom of speech, right? I can't speak in my own country, and I gotta speak to you in a foreign language. But in France, you have the, the uh, you have your freedom of speech if you attack the people who cannot talk back to you, or portray you back, or answer you. Freedom of speech comes with responsibility. And even Jacques Chirac, the former president, that we cannot call an Islamo leftist, said yes, in an official statement as a president, freedom of expression, yes, it, it, is a, it is a human right, but it also comes with responsibility. I have indeed the right to insult you in what you hold dear, but as a responsible citizen, I will not do it because I know it will offend you. So how come France can teach kids we live together, united, etc., and in schools, they teach kids to insult their Muslim comrades and tell them we are part of the same nation. In 2010, there was a photography contest and the winning photography was a man wiping his behind with a French flag. That photography caused a national hysteria. How could we do that to the French flag? The Minister of Interior even wanted to pass legislation to protect the French flag and the people who voted for that photography got fired and lost their jobs. What happened to freedom of speech? Sine was a member of Charlie Hebdo, got fired. Why? Because he made a cartoon about the son of Nicolas Sarkozy. The double standards here are quite obvious. France is in no position to lecture the rest of the world on the human rights. Why? Look at all the human rights violations people encounter here. Being a Muslim woman wearing a headscarf, you have a 1% chance of getting a job. 1%. What kind of country does that to human beings for a piece of cloth over, on their heads? And France literally standing or, you know, in the UN or the, uh, the OSCE and lecture the rest of the world on human rights? 